Hi, I'm one of Dr. Lanterman's students at Georgia Tech in his guitar amplification and effects class. And for my final project, I've built the harmonic percolator, except that uh, the harmonic percolator actually uses harder to find transistors. So we used, we used silicon transistors to build its variant, the harmonic jerkolator. Okay, so right now we have the input coming from the signal generator on the scope just a sine wave and we're looking at the output and I have both of these pots turned all the way up. Right now we have 250 millivolt peak to peak signal coming in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that and we'll look at it on the XY plot. So we'll see right now things look fairly linear and then I'll crank this up and around this point maybe 350 millivolts peak to peak, you'll see it starts to round out at the bottom. But it's still pretty linear up here. But if I get up to, whoop, that was sudden. If I get up to around one volt peak to peak, it starts to round out on the top end. There we go. Now, because we're looking at the output and there are capacitances involved, we have this hysteresis kind of look, but you get the basic idea of what's going on. Okay, now we're probing the output on this side of the DC blocking cap at the output. So this will have the DC bias on it, but maybe we'll see less hysteresis. So I'm at 200 something millivolts now. Let me start cranking that. And again, around 350, you see it start to curve at the bottom. And here, around one volt, you see it start to curve at the top. Somewhere around there. And by looking at the other side of the cap, we get a better sense of what the actual nonlinearity looks like. Oh, and I should mention, I'm running this at a high frequency on purpose to try to get rid of any low frequency effects while making this XY plot. Let's see what happens. And again, this is on, I should say, this side of the cap, but there are some other capacitors here. So if I take the frequency of our signal generator and I start lowering that, at lower frequencies, we'll see those capacitors are having an effect, and now it's a little harder to see what's going on with the nonlinearity with all of this hysteresis kind of look going on. Okay, now we're looking at a usual plot with time on the horizontal axis. This is a one kilohertz signal going in, and we'll see what happens as I increase the amplitude of the wave. So around here, you can see, okay, I've got 380. You can see it start to level out on the bottom there. And as I increase that, eventually, let's see, it's still pretty nice on the top. Ah, okay, around here, let's say I'm at 1.2 volts, something like that. You can see it start to level out on the top. So there's definitely an asymmetry in the response. Now what's interesting is I keep going you actually get these little horns here. That's probably some sort of frequency domain effect going on. So here it's starting to look more like a square wave, maybe. All right, let me zoom that back down. Okay, something I noticed interesting about frequency response aspects. Here I'm at 500 hertz or 450 hertz, I should say, around five volts peak to peak input signal. Now watch what happens as I decrease the frequency. So it's about the same amplitude coming out, but around here, around 200 Hertz, it starts to decrease in amplitude. And down here at 160, it's decreased in amplitude and looked, and looks a lot less distorted. And down here at say your low E string 82, doesn't look distorted at all. Interesting. 
And while we're at it, we measured some of the DC bias points. At the collector of the NPN, we read 3.8 volts. At the base, we read 3.77 volts. So if you want, you can figure out the current through this 100K. We read 3.19 volts at the junction of these emitters. And for the PNP, we read 2.49 volts at the base and 1.99 volt at the collector. Okay, let's listen to it. I have one volt peak to be going in with the volume at the input turned all the way down. That's this input control here. And let's turn that up. Okay, that was 440 hertz. Now this is 220 hertz. So that could be a fun synthesizer module, not just a guitar pedal. Okay, now this is 82 hertz, which is the low E string on the guitar. And with the input volume all the way down, I don't hear anything at all. Let me turn that up now. And next up, I will simulate this in Spice. I think that's enough noise.